So nobody really knows what artificial intelligence really is. We don't know what it could be, yet something is coming. And we, we hear the term, we hear other subsets of the term being used. There seems to be something in the air where there are a lot of startups, a lot of breakthroughs being announced. And the question is, is it real? And if it is real, how does it impact our lives? The Reading and Artificial Intelligence Roundtable with Kevin Kelly was a terrific look at both the short term look at AI, the medium term, and the long term. And all three give really, really interesting perspectives. On the short term front, there's a sense that there's a lot more AI actually around us, just not using that name. There are um, tasks such as you know, trying to find a pattern in 100 billion data points in under a second, which a human's never going to be good at. Mm -hmm. um, and those also require AI, you know, using natural language processing, um, all kinds of statistical algorithms, correlations, clustering, um, basically figuring out the semantics in millions of documents, these kinds of things, building complex graphs that represent the knowledge or patterns in large amounts of information, humans are never going to be good at that. You know, learning is the key to the singularity. Um, if When you make a system that can learn, um, you know, it brings the singularity closer. Um, so, I'm not sure you're even talking about, forget the singularity, I'm just saying that you have something that is a network effects. You, you, you have the same thing happening with search or anything else, which is that um, the bigger it gets, the more attractive, the more attractive, the better. So, but it, only so happens, it only happens if the system can really can learn. To learn, exactly, right. The learning aspect, which that, that will enable AI to exceed our own mm -hmm. intelligence. Um, okay. There's also the piece that might even be shorter term, it's the collective intelligence piece of it, and uh, and you may not even need such sophisticated AI to leverage that collective intelligence better. A specific firm might come up with an AI solution to something, you know, curating content or uh, surfacing recommendations. Um, I use the example of Netflix. They have a kind of an AI system or machine learning system that, you know, uh, populates your movie, movie queue. I just learned last week that 80% of Roombas are named. People name the Roombas. <laughs> if, if people who design AI capture that, then they can actually uh, entice the audience to meet the AI ha more than halfway. It means that we don't necessarily have to have and commercialize such incredibly deep artificial intelligence for it to actually be effective. In the medium term, it was also starting to think about how not too long in the future, and we're talking years here, not decades, we're going to start seeing artificial intelligence kind of do discrete, smart tasks that humans can't do. Warfare tends to always lead the way into our new technologies, and we're, we're making a huge uh, shift towards drone warfare, which which is is really AI warfare. That we're we're now in this you know sort of golden age when when we have drones and hardly anybody else does, and that's quickly going to end. One of the things we know from high frequency trading right now, there's a whole movement to restrain and regulate that, and uh, I think certainly when we have computer driven cars and, and we get into the liability issues, basically our people are programming ethics. I mean, you have to at some point actually program ethics into into the machines. Maya Matarik at USC, she's the head of the robotics lab there and she's working on social robots for, uh, for service for uh, health care and uh, elderly care and autistic children. Mm -hmm. I've seen this video where she was um, where this woman was doing her exercises and at the end she kind of looked at the robot as though see I was able to do it and so uh, but you have to she has to you have to be very careful that each of the, uh, the, the AI is reacting to whether the person likes to be pushed or it likes to be you know just sort of encouraged nudged a little bit whether they're outgoing or not. And then ultimately though it went to would be let's say the longer term future which again is not very long uh, where you start really start to think about AI as almost ubiquitous computing, smartness all over you. There's a kind of evolution that goes on with something as um, ubiquitously useful as intelligence, um, not unlike what has happened in um, utility companies, where we no longer really think of who the, the network effects of electricity 
we just assume that electricity will be everywhere. The effect on humanity, the effect on individual human beings is going to be this ubiquitous um, ether of intelligence all around where you'll live um, in what, what Alan Newell referred to as sort of the land of fairy, where you'll be able to, you know, if you go up to a door, there's no reason why you can't talk to the door and it'll understand you and at least know what doors ought to know about the world. And that sort of, that sort of world that our children and grandchildren will, will live in um, is really um, what I see as inevitable and as a good thing. In thinking about the long-term implications of these things, uh, and even the short-term in some respect, there was an interesting discussion about what should we be doing now? What should we be doing to prepare for this? And one thing that I thought of that I think we should look at is the impact on the job market. And I know you disagree with me on that, uh, Kevin, and I think I know why, but I think AI will affect the job market and it'll mainly knock out some some of the bottom runs and that type of thing. Most of the jobs that people are kind of fighting to retain are jobs that humans shouldn't be doing to begin with. Every experience you've had in the past is that technological automation increases new jobs. Basically robots invent new jobs for us and we invent new jobs for robots and so it's a wonderful symbiosis. Um, so so there are a lot of jobs that would go away but my, you know, basically we'll be happy that they go away. The first killer applications um, will very likely be ones where there's um, a limited amount of um, ethics involved, like um, helping with uh, the elderly, something where um, there's a, a clear common good. Well, actually, I think there's nothing better for human ethics than actually to have AIs do it because it will force us to articulate how we make decisions because we don't even know. I mean, we, we have all these assumptions, we have all these uh, things that we do out of habit and tradition, but forcing us to program them will make us come back and re-examine what we ourselves think are true or, or believe. We're very bad at ethics and the same way machines are much better at chess, they, they may they may be much better at ethics than we are and, and that, that's a lot more fair. I've heard some researchers say that actually what we really want is artificial smartness. We actually don't want kind of you know artificial consciousness or all the other things because it's problematic. What you really want to have is you want to have this kind of like, it's like you know, what domesticated, severely domesticated, restricted, kind of almost uh, castrated smartness, which is very directed and is only as smart as it needs to be. 30 years ago, um, artificial intelligence essentially um, gave up on um, the pursuit of strong AI, real AI, superhuman AI, mm -hmm. had essentially settled into a safe, secure burrow of exploiting um, shallow methods mm -hmm. in uh, applications that it was hard to even decide if they were AI or not. Um, and I'm really glad to see a return based on some of the recent achievements like um, Watson and the self-driving cars and series that we're returning to the discussion of um, long-term um, uh, changes in societal institutions um, and the morality and the ethics and uh, the impact that real AI is going to have and I would say once again I feel that I'm going to live to see real AI. AI is here it's rapidly coming in much more robust way and very soon it's going to be transformative in many, many different ways. It's going to have big impacts on the country, impacts on the economy, impacts on how people earn a living. It'll actually force kind of social structure changes, political changes, and this is something that we should be thinking about now rather than later.